Welcome to Inside Scoop, Virginia. My name is George Burke. I'm your host for the next hour. Uh, tonight we have Dale Evans, who is the Democrat running for Clerk of Court for Fairfax County and Fairfax City. Dale, welcome. Thank you, George. Appreciate it. Last time I had you on the show, uh, you were not quite yet a candidate. Right. You were contemplating it. We were waiting to see whether anyone else was going to file. Uh, I think that uh, among the Democratic Party and, and uh, prospective candidates, it was decided pretty quickly that you were a formidable candidate and that uh, uh, no one challenged you, so you are our nominee. Uh, uh, you came in late because we had another nominee who opted not to run. Uh, first of all, I applaud you for doing that. Thank you. Uh, and second of all, uh, I think you've really jump-started a campaign and got things going, and uh, uh, you've certainly got your opponent, John Fry, on the run, it appears. Uh, first of all, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. I know you're a realtor. Uh, I know that you served as a chairman of the Genesee County, Michigan Board of Supervisors, so you certainly have that kind of experience, both political and administrative. But let's give us a little bit of your history. All right. Thanks, George. I appreciate that. And thank you for having me on the show. This is great. Uh, it's good to be back. Um, I was born in Michigan and raised by uh, uh, my mother and father, obviously, Leo and Mildred Evans. Um, and I grew up normal lifestyle. Uh, after high school, I was uh, going to be drafted, so my father grabbed me by the ear and took me down to the Marine Corps headquarters and said, you're going to join the Marines, young man. So uh, like he and my uncle and my brother, I, w I went into the Marines uh, and ended up going to Vietnam for 13 months. Uh, I was uh, uh, an aircraft technician uh, in Vietnam, and uh, I served in the, for the military for four years. It, it did a lot for me. Um, like all kids, I was young. I was you know, enjoying high school, enjoying youth. And the Marine Corps gave me focus. It gave me a commitment to hard work, an ethic for hard work and integrity. And it taught me how to be a man, if I can. Uh, I love the Marine Corps. It was a great thing. Uh, after the Marines, I came out. I sold real estate. Uh, three days after I was discharged from the Marine Corps, I went into selling real estate in the company that my parents worked in. And um, I've been selling real estate off and on now for the last 37 years. It was very hard in Michigan during the 1970s and 80s when uh, the oil embargo came in 1973 and we went from about 5% unemployment up to about 35 or 40%. Uh, nobody was buying anything, not even you know, takeout at restaurants. Uh, it was a very difficult time in Flint, Michigan, and, and you still see that today when you go to Michigan. So I left there in 1990 and came down here. My wife uh, worked for a United States Senator. She was offered a position here. We came here. And I like to say that I was a Michigander by birth, but I'm a Virginian by choice. Uh, it's a great state, and I love the people. I love the area. Uh, I have a daughter who is married, lives in Springfield, and I have three children who are just the joy of our lives, and uh, we're just having a great time. They're enrolled in Fairfax County Public Schools, and um, I have to tell you, I am the biggest booster for the school system in this community that I've ever seen. In fact, I am the president of the boosters in my high school, at my son's high school. Um, I, they've just done great things for my children. So. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> the, um, uh, wh why are you running for clerk of court? You know, in, many, in many voters' eyes, it's an obscure office, uh, although I think you and I both know better. Uh, but most voters don't focus on it. They don't understand what it is, even though it oversees the civil and the criminal courts. It oversees everything from marriage licenses to birth certificates. Uh, and it oversees certainly, as you well know in your profession, real estate. It does. It does. This is the most important office no one's ever heard of. And um, I'll get to why I'm r running in just a moment, but I guess this is a little bit about why I'm running. It's a shame that no one's heard of this office. If, if we were to go to Arlington, for example, and we ask residents of Arlington who the county clerk is, People would know about David Bell. They'd know the kind of job he's done and the integrity that he's run his office with. That's because he reaches out to the voters and brings them into the process. He talks to the residents of the community. Um, he goes to work every day. He's, he's an excellent clerk, and he's the kind of public official that we should have here in Fairfax County. The kind of public official that I want to be. I want to be there. I want to reach out to the people. A politician, when they run for office, uh, and then after they've won the office, if, they've, if they're elected, they should be reaching out to the public and they should be going out to those individuals and the public saying, this is what I want to do. This is how I want to spend your tax dollars. Do you agree or disagree? I mean, that's leadership. That's, that's how democracy works. And it's unfortunate that that hasn't happened in Fairfax County. Um, no, it, it, when I go speak at groups, 
My fir first questions I ask is, does anybody know what the clerk, who the clerk is? And no hands go up. And then I say, does anybody know what the clerk's office does? And no hands go up. And that's a shame because this person manages 184 employees and an eight and a half million dollar budget. It's it's a it's a serious it's a serious place. I will add at this point, if I may, that we invited John Fry on several occasions to appear on this program. Uh, I wanted to match him up with you, quite frankly, uh, and he refused. Uh, I understand that he has opted not to debate you at all anymore, that he's, the, the word I get is that he's trying to avoid any forum he can where he meets you face to face. He was the invisible man. He's been in office for 16 years. I'm very active in Fairfax politics and I couldn't have told you who he was till you got into this race and we had a race going and we finally yeah. focused on the office. Well, we've had, we've had the opportunity to appear in a couple forums and in a couple debates. And, you know, that's the way people hear the exchange of ideas. Uh, we just debated in front of the Fairfax Bar Association and the, and the nurses, and I think it was uh, Medical Association. And we debated quite extensively for about 35 minutes. And we talked about what we wanted to do, what hasn't been done, what needs to be done. And I think the people in that audience heard ideas. And that's what politics and that's what elections are about, is the, the discourse and the exchange of ideas. It's too bad if he's not going to agree to meet me anymore. Um, I relish those times. I relish being on the stage and exchanging repartee with him. Uh, Mr. Fry appears to be a nice man. I've enjoyed being on the stage with him. But, um, you know, it's too bad that he's not going to do it anymore because people really need to hear that. They need to know why we're both running. And speaking of that, you asked me why I'm running. I'm running mainly because I was approached by people because they don't like the way that the, the office is being run. Uh, in my review of the office, there are major issues. Uh, there's the sale of um, our personal information, including social security numbers, to people all over this country. There's the uh, failure by our clerk to, in his office to pass audits. Um, since he was re-elected in 1999, uh, out of eight years of audit, audits and Supreme Court reviews, um, he's flunked six. That's 75 percent failure rate. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, um, when the, the audits told him that his computer system and his management in the office wasn't doing what he had to do, um, he went out and bought a computer system, didn't work with the state Supreme Court, didn't install a computer system that would interface with other people, and spent $5 million of taxpayers' money to do that. And today, he's got a, he's got a budget request for another $5 million so that he can replace his broken computer system. And he wants to repeat the mistake by not working with the Supreme Court to do the right thing again. And so it's going to cost the taxpayers of this community $10 million. I mean, those are just three items that, that got me in, involved in this race and made me want to, want to run. In all the debates, in all the forums, when I've confronted the clerk about this, not once has he said, no, I don't sell social security numbers, because he does. Not once has he said, no, I don't flunk audits, because he does. And not once has he said that I installed a bad computer system, because he's on record saying that the computer can't do the things that he thought he could do with it. I wonder why he opted to use a computer system that was not quote unquote approved, so to speak. Uh, and and the, t the system that's used by most of the other clerks, at least the clerks in the larger jurisdictions. And of course, this is the largest clerk's office in Virginia. You'd think they'd be a leader. You'd think they'd be a leader uh, around the rest of the state. You'd think that they would be the first to get the computer system that connects with the state operations. I understand that some things have to be entered twice yes. in that office, and all because the, the computer system that he bought for millions of dollars will not connect directly with Virginia's system, so it has to be re-entered for that to happen. Yeah. Exactly. Explain that to me a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the computer system that he bought, the, the Supreme Court said, get a system that interfaces with all the different entities, all the other clerk's offices, because what's important is for him not only to collect fees and pass those fees on, that obviously is important because it generates revenue to run the state and mm -hmm. the clerk's office on, but the other issue is, is that he has to keep numbers. You know, he's got to keep the statistics about how many felonies are filed, how many misdemeanors are filed. I mean, this is an important statistic. It, it determines the funding by which the Supreme Court gives or the comptroller gives uh, or the compensation division gives to uh, our prosecuting attorney or commonwealth attorney to determine how many attorneys he gets. They're all based on these numbers that are generated by the clerk's office. If the clerk's office is unable to generate the correct numbers, 
and he and you know the system is broken it's not working if it's generating the wrong numbers then all those statistics that follow will be wrong and the funding for the commonwealth attorney's office the guys who prosecute the bad guys they'll get less they'll get less the the money that he gets for the clerk's office to operate the clerk's office will be less because those numbers are wrong he's he's he has stipulated that the computer doesn't do what he wants it, it, it's not an issue where I'm arguing with him or he disagrees with me. He stipulated that. He's gone out with an RFP to buy a new computer. So that's already stipulated. Um, but for some reason, he just refuses to sit down with the state Supreme Court, with the auditor's office, with the powers that be, and he refuses to go out and do a, a purchase of a computer system that works with everybody. Now, does What's his reasoning? Is, I mean, have you challenged him on that? What's, he, what's his response? Well, his response is that the state computer doesn't do the job. And, you know, that may happen, but this is my rule. My, my rule is that one person doesn't have all the answers. We need to have multiple eyes on this process. We need to have people working with their clerk to make sure that what we buy and what we get interfaces with everybody and is the system we need. By going it alone, and Fairfax County is the only county in the state that is completely independent of the state system. The only county. He decided to go by going it alone. What happens is you have a system that doesn't work with anybody else. I don't know what his reasons are. I don't know why he wants to do that. Um, you know, I know that uh, uh, you would think that he would want to go out and get the best system that serves people, but obviously that hasn't happened because it's cost the taxpayers, or will have cost the taxpayers, $10 million by the time he gets his way. One could speculate, but I won't be mad. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would, uh, we only have a couple of minutes before break, so I don't want to get into uh, a, a major discussion. I got a couple of other issue areas I want to discuss with you. What would be the first thing you'd change? Obviously the computer system, I guess, but that's a long, that's a major process. It is. It is. What else? What other types of changes? Just bang off a few for me, well, the first because then we'll talk about it more at length. Okay, after. the first thing I would do is I would keep the office open until 6 o'clock at night, or at least 5. Um, presently, the clerk's office closes at 4 o'clock. His rationalization is there's no sense keeping him open until 6 because the state Supreme Court computer shut down at 6. So he shuts down two, one and a half to two hours early. I don't know anybody else in the county who has a full-time job who goes home at 4.30. Uh, you know, maybe teachers, but they start much earlier than he does. Well, I hear it's not really a full-time job. For well, and the other thing I want to do is I want to establish a task force involving realtors, lenders, abstracting companies, title companies, uh, the clerks from all the counties in Northern Virginia, and I want to set up a task force to analyze our land records division. Our present land records division, our clerk likes to say that people come from all over the country to, to vision this or to view this land record system because it's such a great system. But when you talk to the national title insurance companies, the people who do business in states other than Virginia, and you ask them this question, is it the, the, the role model? Is it the leader in land records? To a person, they'll say, no. I mean, I had a person stop me the other day at the Robinson football game. He said, are you going to allow electronic filing of deeds and uh, title policies? And I said, yeah. And he says, they've been doing it in Los Angeles County for 20 years. We are going to take a short two-minute break. Uh, my guest today is Dale Evans, Democratic candidate for clerk of court. Uh, we look forward to your calls after the break. Thank you for watching. This is Mommy's bed. Me and Jenny were jumping on it. Mommy's gun fell on the floor. I was a cowboy. Bang, 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 bang. I said, Jenny, wake up, wake up. It's just pretend. But she wouldn't wake up. If you give me a fish... If you give someone a fish... You feed them for a day. Teach someone to fish. You feed them for a lifetime. Give me a fish, and you'll feed me for a day. Teach me to fish, and you'll feed me for a lifetime. Through Volunteers of America, you can help change lives in your community. Hey, 
mister studied algebra in school and got a better job than I could. You take the last call. No, 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 mister stuck in an entry level job because you only learned basic math. I don't have a boss riding my butt like you do, so you take it so you can get back to your desk. <laughs> you know, I probably should, but maybe Miss AP Calculus with the $200 haircut in the big office upstairs would like a cup. Oh no, mister, what was your name again? Never mind, it doesn't matter. I'm too busy doing important things to care. I just came down for some sweet and start. You know, if my limited math abilities weren't keeping me from getting a better job, I'd quit this afternoon. I don't blame you. But thank goodness you're stuck here because we really need someone to make the coffee. <laughs> Welcome back to Inside Scoop Virginia. My name is George Burke. Uh, our guest today is Dale Evans, who's Democratic candidate for Clerk of Court in Fairfax County and Fairfax City. We welcome your calls. You can reach us at 571-749-1166. Just before the break, we had Lawrence from McLean on the phone. Unfortunately, we lost Lawrence. Lawrence, feel free to call back, and I'll try to take you as soon as possible. Dale, let's get back to where we were. And uh, you were talking about uh, the changes, what you hope to implement in sure. this office. Thanks, George. Yeah, I, I started talking about keeping the office open until 6 o'clock. One of the things that I think is essential in government service is realizing that the, the government is here to serve the people. And I believe in customer service. I have been an, a, a real estate salesperson um, for about 37 years. My job is dependent upon what kind of service I give my clients. If I give them bad service, they walk away from me or they never call me again. They don't refer me to their, their friends and relatives. So customer service is essential to me. That's what I want to bring to this court, this clerk's office. The clerk's office presently, um, customer service isn't important to him. Um, at least I don't believe. When asked, I, I've made a lot about the fact that he doesn't go out and talk to the people. And when the issue came up uh, at a debate in front of the Fairfax Chamber of Commerce the other day, um, I, I was making this point and he said, it's not important for the people to know who the clerk is. Well, see, I, I think that's the reverse thinking that we should have. We should have somebody who wants to know, who wants the people to be involved. We should have somebody who cares about, does this office serve the needs of the public? Are we open so that people who work in Washington, D.C. and live in Fairfax County, if they have business to do in, front, in the clerk's office, we should be open till 6 o'clock so that they can be there to conduct their business without taking off half a day from work. The second thing we should do is we need to make sure that um, we need to make sure that the, the clerk's office starts developing computer programs and computer technology that will allow people to do things online instead of having to get into cars and drive to do this stuff. That would be the ideal thing, but it's not happening. So that's two of the things I want to do. The uh, there's a lot of talk that uh, certainly with our transportation problems that the more that can be offered online the better off uh, we all are, uh, the customer, uh, and even in terms of, of the clerk's office, in terms of the service you provide. But there's the downside to that, and that is the whole idea of identity theft. You touched upon it earlier. Yes. Most people don't realize, I think, that their social security numbers, often date of births, uh, their, the, the names of their children, uh, and a lot of other sensitive and personal data is literally uh, available as a public record often on the internet from the clerk's office from what I gather. Well, and it's true. Um, there is a great deal of information that is public information that's on the database in the county database. And there's a lot of good policy reasons to have that information available. But, the, but not all of the information. We don't need to know people's social security numbers. And presently, if you live in Des Moines, Iowa, or Utah, or Arizona, or any other state or locality in the United States, you can sign a contract with our clerk and pay that clerk $25 a month. And you can have access to all of those public records, which includes social security numbers. Now, the problem is, is that the clerk now says that the social security numbers have a firewall system built into them so you can't get them. What that means is that you have to have a user code, and a, a username, and a password. Now, 
I stopped by a friend of mine who's an attorney and has a title business. And I said, can I get on your system for about 10 minutes? And I logged into a system. In those 10 minutes, I pulled up two social security numbers of individuals in 10 minutes. Now, if a business in Utah or Nebraska or New York or wherever it is, you are paying this contract fee. While the person who owns the firm may not be the person we have to worry about, it's the employee of that person. It's the person who can come in after hours with the access code and the password, get into the system, download that information, and they can sell it. Give us a one minute uh, break. We are going to go to a commercial, a public service announcement right now. Some people in Fairfax County don't know what public access means. Some think it's just another channel on the dial. But it's much more than that. It's the voice of the people. People like you. Your neighbors, your friends, or your family. People who want to share ideas, opinions, cultures, lifestyles, art, sports, music, events, entertainment, history, science, beliefs. People who want to learn about television, producing, directing, Cameras, audio, lighting, editing, or radio, talk, music, whatever you think people should hear. Public access is the place where everyone has a voice. And it's the place where that voice gets heard. A place where you can create your own form of personal expression. So what do you want to say? Whatever it is. You can say it here. Because we're public access. For the people. By the people. We had to take that break because my guest tonight, candidate Dale Evans for clerk of court, is so hot he burned out his first mic. <laughs> <laughs> when I so rudely interrupted you. Oh. All right. Well, what we were talking about were, was the sale of Social Security numbers. Mm -hmm. um, very as scary I, proposition. It's very scary. And as I was stating, um, these Social Security numbers are available to companies all over the country for a $25 fee. Those companies sign a contract with our clerk. They then have access to all the public information in the county database. They can go in there and get anything they want, anything that's available. In some cases, it's social security numbers. They can then take those numbers and do with them as they please. Now, the owner of the firm, the person who sells the, signs the contract, may be perfectly responsible, although I don't think he should get access to our social security numbers, or she, but it, they may be perfectly responsible. But what about the employee of that firm who comes in after hours and uses the access code and the password and downloads this, these information? And I don't know if the viewers got to hear me earlier because of the mic, but I stopped by a, a person who subscribes to the clerk's subscription fee, and I stopped in there, and I downloaded in 10 minutes two Social Security numbers. Uh, one of the people in my campaign went to the clerk's office, and in a matter of just 30 minutes, uh, was able to access many ID numbers or social security numbers uh, just by using the universal password and access code that the clerk provides at the counter in his office. It's not a safe system. It's not encrypted. There is no real access. The clerk likes to say, well, there's no incident of this ever happening, um, but he has no way of tracking that. The, uh, my understanding is for the state computers, they're attempting to develop a program where they can redact some of this personal data from the files. Uh, exactly how they're going to do that, I don't know. Well, there's actually, there's actually a firm in Florida who sells software that for somewhere around $400,000 or less uh, has software that will re redact those social security numbers out of there, and I believe their success rate is somewhere around 95 or 98%. Mm -hmm. um, that's a pretty good success rate, and it's worth the expenditure of that $400,000 or uh, whatever it is to get that software and stop the sale of these social security numbers. We have a call. Uh, Lawrence from McLean is calling back. Lawrence, how are you tonight? Uh, fine. How are you? Good. What can we do for you? Uh, well, thank you both for the for the great show. This is a really interesting topic. I, I didn't know a lot of what I'm learning here, and I'm really uh, really amazed that. Me neither. Really, so don't feel bad. <laughs> uh, that's great. And, uh, it's great that we're uh, we're getting partial debate on this. I'm I'm sorry to hear that the other uh, candidate hasn't joined in yet. Um, uh, I'm really uh, somewhat somewhat. Uh, frightened by some of the information that I'm hearing, I'm hearing about uh, uh, loose use of information and, and funds in the county clerk's office. And I wonder, uh, Mr. Evans, if you can give us some sense of 
how long it would take uh, to put into place some of the improvements that you're talking about? Well, I think the redaction of the Social Security numbers could happen relatively soon. Um, it's just a matter of purchasing so software and getting that up and, and running. And that's a great question, Lawrence. Thank you very much. I think some of the other problems, as George alluded to earlier, um, they, they presently have a computer in the office that, that doesn't do the job. It's, it's messing up left and right. And to replace that is going to take time. You have to go out for RFPs. You have to get a person who understands computer technology to work with us and develop this kind of system and the proposal we need. I'm hoping that our present clerk doesn't go out and buy a computer system before I take office January 1. I hope he waits so that we are able to go in there and do the innovative things we want to do. So that, that will take a lot. One of the things that will stop immediately, and I can guarantee this, is the failure by the clerk to pass audits by the state. Presently our clerk has been audited every year since 1999 by either the auditor's office for the Commonwealth of Virginia or the, US, or the state Supreme Court. Of the eight audits that have been performed, he's failed six of them. Some of these audits say that he failed to follow state government, uh, state laws and regulations. He's failed to uh, have good bookkeeping experience. He's failed to collect fees. He's failed to pass those fees on to the state. I mean, that's his job. It sounds like some pretty gross mismanagement on his part. And pretty I'm part of that office. Pretty amazing. Can I ask well, a follow-up? Well, and that's what this is that? all about. It's about management. Um, it's about someone who knows to go, how, how to go in there and run an office of 184 people. Somebody who can get people to produce and give customer service to the clients that, that come to the office to get service and perform the duties they're supposed to at a great and, and, and an adequate level. I have that experience. Uh, in the past, when I've debated my opponent or appeared on a forum, when I've su suggested innovative things I want to do, my opponent always says, no, that can't be done. He never talks about, let's try to go out and see if we can find innovation. Let's see if we can be creative and find solutions. It's always, no, you can't do that. Well, for 16 years, we've had the, the management practices of 1991 in place. It's time that we get some management practices for 2007 in place that allow this county to continue growing as it is and to b deliver good service to the taxpayers of this community. We have uh, our caller still on the line. Lawrence, I, if you have a follow-up, I'd urge you to stay. We're going to have to take a break in about 15 seconds. So uh, we'll be back in two minutes, and hopefully you'll hang on, and we'll take your call then. Again, uh, we thank you for watching Inside Scoop Virginia. My name is George Burke, and our guest is Clerk of Court candidate Dale Evans. Thanks for watching. We'll be back in two. Some people in Fairfax County don't know what public access means. Some think it's just another channel on the dial. But it's much more than that. It's the voice of the people. People like you. Your neighbors, your friends, or your family. People who want to share ideas, opinions, cultures, lifestyles, art, sports, music, events, entertainment, history, science, beliefs. People who want to learn about television, producing, directing, cameras, audio, lighting, editing, or radio, talk, music, whatever you think people should hear. Public access is the place where everyone has a voice. And it's the place where that voice gets heard. A place where you can create your own form of personal expression. So what do you want to say? Whatever it is. You can say it here. Because we're public access. For the people. By the people. It is about balancing our choices between the gray of the concrete jungle and the stunning beauty of the real one between a stoic facade of granite and the fury of the canyon. It's why there's Earthshare, the simple way to find balance. Earthshare is the workplace giving program bringing the leading environmental groups under one umbrella. Support Earthshare, support them all. Earthshare, please ask your employer about workplace giving. To learn more, visit our website. Thousands of kids in this country have everything it takes to go to college. Except the money. The United Negro College Fund. A mind is a terrible thing to waste.
Welcome back to Inside Scoop Virginia. I'm your host, George Burke. Today our guest is Dale Evans. He's the Democrat running for clerk of court in Fairfax County and Fairfax uh, City. He's running against an incumbent who we haven't seen for 16 years, and all of a sudden we see his signs popping up a little bit around uh, uh, the county. Uh, we invited his opponent uh, here on a number of occasions. Uh, and so far he has declined, and so I'm more than happy to have Dale here, and uh, we're not going to do the, the, the gimmicky stuff of, of empty seats. Instead, we'll just trash him. It makes it easier. <laughs> um, uh, we have Lawrence on the line, and I'm going to take Lawrence in a minute, but I urge people to call at 571-749-1166. Lawrence, you got a follow-up? Uh, yes, I, I do. I have another question about, uh, about the audits. I'm, I'm also very, uh, very surprised to hear the 75% failure rate in the audits. Uh, I'm a long-term taxpayer and resident here in Fairfax County and, and also a business owner, and I've got kids in Fairfax County Public Schools, and uh, uh, I would be very unhappy if they were getting a 75% fail rate. Uh, I, I wonder if you are able to make a commitment to what your pass rate is going to be uh, once you've taken over the office of the county clerk. And I can take that question, that uh, answer offline. Dale, it's all yours. Well, yeah, I'll make the commitment. I'm not going to fail audits. Um, my opponent has indicated that he believes these uh, audits that he's failed in the state Supreme Court reports are merely management tools. Well, they would be management tools if the reports came in and then you adjusted your management technique so that you didn't have the same problem over and over again. But when the audit comes in and you ignore them, from 2001, 2002, and 2003, um, the state auditor said you need to get a computer system and it needs to be a system that will talk to all the other entities within the uh, legal justice system and the clerk's offices in the other counties, and he ignored it. He went out and put a computer system in that totally stood alone. It doesn't work. He's admitted it doesn't work, and now he wants to spend $5 million to replace it. I'd like to see a couple of reporters take a little closer look at that. Well, it I would be nice. It would happen, I, have, I have here in my hand, if, if I can show it. Sure can. These are the audits that the clerk has failed. This is the stack of audits since 1999, since he's been reelected. These are the audits in the state Supreme Court reports that he has been told uh, that he needs to adjust his management techniques. After we talked about it uh, a week or so ago, I went online and looked at just some of the cursory stuff you can find there. And there were a lot of pretty strong adjectives for what is normally pretty dry material. An audit it tends to be pretty dry, but they were talking about mismanagement. They were talking, I think, in one or two instances, the danger that with fines being lost and this type of stuff that you know, you couldn't, if you didn't have control of it, you couldn't have control of a staff member or something putting their hands in a cookie jar. Well, yeah, and, I, and I'm not aware of those reports, but I do know that if we're not collecting the fines and if we're not collecting the fees that the clerk is supposed to, that's one of his main jobs is to collect those fines and fees. If we're not doing that, then what's happening is there's less revenue going into the system, and that means the state's got to look for more revenue. It's, it's that simple. This is revenue that the clerk operates on. This is revenue that the state operates on. We have to collect those fees that are out there that are being required to be paid. That's what the clerk's office is. It's a clerk. It's not a policy job. We're not voting on issues like the Supreme Court, I mean like the Congress of the United States or mm -hmm. the uh, caucus, the legislature in Virginia. We're not voting on those issues. This is about management. This is about passing your audits. This is about not selling ID and social security numbers. And it's about making sure that computer systems that you buy, you know what they are and you buy the right system. The, uh, the legislature passed a law that requires social security numbers to be redacted by 2010. But I heard last week that the fact of the matter is that there's no money to back up the legislation. And in Virginia, if there's not an actual appropriation attached to that bill, it's, it really it might as well not have passed. Um, let's talk a little bit about the sale of land records. Because uh, I think that's where we find a lot of this identity theft as well, because there is a lot of social security numbers, birth dates, those types of things in these records and all the various other documents that surround them. Right. Well, our clerk likes to tell people that people have come from all over the world to uh, view this land records division that he maintains and that it's the number one land records division in all the United States and people come to see this system. 
Well, in fact, it, that's not the case. We're light years behind in some instances of things that are happening in other states around the country. So we're not the, the leader in that area. I'm not, I don't want anybody here to believe that I'm saying the clerk doesn't do some things well. Maybe he does. But I'm just talking about when he, we've been on forums, when he states that he's the number one land records, I, it just does, doesn't hold water. Uh, the only person saying that is the clerk. I think that the land records in Fairfax would be particularly valuable to all sorts of unsavory characters because it is one of the wealthiest counties in the nation. Where else would you want to steal identities but places like Hollywood, Beverly Hills, and Fairfax County? Well, it, it's true. And the land records um, we found out over the last couple of weeks, the land records division poses another problem. Um, today I made public um, um, some research I had done that um, it appears that State Senator Ken Cuccinelli was involved in a land transaction where in 2005, uh, by an agreement that was drafted before this all started, he bought one-third interest in a home in Vienna, and then that was on December 1st, 2005. On de December 6th, 2005, five days later, he conveyed that interest back into the trust of that family that owned it before they started, and then he put a lien against that property for $185,000. Now, he paid what looks or it appears he paid based on the documents and the land records that he paid approximately $160,000 for it, for that one-third interest. He turned around and got a lien for $185,000 for the, the lien that he filed. And it was at 10 and a quarter percent interest. So he did that on December 6th. On December 15th, he went to the, clerk, the clerk's office, Mr. Fry's office, and recorded his conveyance and failed to pay grantor's tax. The tax that you and I have to pay when we sell our house, Senator Cuccinelli didn't pay, and he, and he asserted that he didn't have to pay it under a state, uh, an estate planning law um, that said that if you don't make any money on the transaction or if you um, uh, are a trustee to the, process, to the, to the trust, then you're exempt from paying taxes. Well, he didn't meet that criteria. Now, that property was later sold in March of 2006, just a few months later, for $600,000. And at that time, it appears that Senator Cuccinelli was paid off that $185,000. That, that's when he was paid for it. So from December of 2005 until, I believe it was March of 2006, Senator Cuccinelli had an interest in this property and he was owed this $185,000, which he was deriving income from, because he was paid that in March. He was paid off. Now here's the rub. Um, when this information came forward, and this is, a, this is not the normal transaction. This is a, a, an amazing series of events. But when, this, when we found out about this, I asked some of my campaign aides to do a little bit more research and to find out whether C Senator Cuccinelli ever paid or ever disclosed to the state his interest in this property or that he was getting revenue somewhere than from besides just his law practice and so they pulled his his disclosure form that he's required to file in January of every year every elected official every candidate for office has to file this disclosure form and on there they ask do you have an interest in real estate other than your primary residence he marked yes then scratched that out and wrote no and it says, do you derive, have you derived any income from anywhere other than your practice of law? And he said no. Both of these cases are not true, it appears, based on these documents. He did the same thing in 2007 when he still technically had an interest in the property because he didn't file the paperwork showing that the, the loan of $185,000 had been paid off until spring of 2007. So over this period of 13 or 16 months, whatever it is, over that period of time, twice he had a chance to disclose to the state his interest in this property, and twice he didn't do it. Now, that's Senator Cuccinelli, and he can talk to the voters of his Senate district about that. What I'm focused on here is the fact that the clerk didn't collect the grantor's tax. When you and I sell our house, one of the things that, and I do this for a living, one of the things that shows up on the settlement sheet is grantor's tax. The seller pays this tax. It's a dollar per thousand, or it was at that time. Um, I have to pay it, you have to pay it, Senator Cuccinelli asserted he didn't have to pay it. On the face of these documents, it appears that his assertion was wrong, that he should have paid that money. 
That's, a, that's serious. And so we have asked Senator Cuccinelli, or we have asked, rather, the clerk of the court a few questions. And if I could read those, I'd appreciate Certainly. it. Certainly. Because I think they're serious questions. I mean, one of the things we want to know is, you referred to the opponent or, or the person who filed for this seat back in the spring of this year to run for clerk of the court as a Democratic nominee. He withdrew because of alleged financial improprieties. This is, again, an allegation, or not an allegation, but certainly questioning, questioning the financial proprietiness, proprietiness, improprieties. Yeah, that they were tax sense. issues, in fact, too. Yeah. Secondly, uh, the clerk has strong political ties with Senator Cuccinelli. We have video of the clerk endorsing Senator Cuccinelli for re-election and saying he's a friend. Thirdly, the fact that it happened while, he, while Mr. Fry was clerk and he's a supporter raises issues. So these are the questions that we have asked the clerk uh, if he could answer for us. What procedures have you implemented to make sure that people are paying the grantors taxes, especially given that the General Assembly has designated the funds collected from this tax to pay for our county roads and highways? Second, have you conducted an audit of such, exec of such exemption claims? If so, what triggers this audit? Third, what steps did your office take to verify that the December 15, 2005 deed transferring Senator, Senator Cuccinelli's interest in the property into the trust was legitimately exempt from taxes? And lastly, the transaction raises a number of red flags from its rapid increase in recorded value to its unusually high interest rate. Has the Cuccinelli real estate deal already been reviewed by the clerk's office? If not, why not? And how was it allowed, allowed to occur in your watch? Now, these are important questions. Sure they are. And sure if are. I was the clerk, or when I become the clerk, you asked earlier what were some of the first things I do. One of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to establish a list so that when any transaction with the clerk's office takes place, if it involves an elected official, a friend of mine, a major donor to my campaign, or any donor to my campaign, or if it involves a major developer, a flag's going to go off with that clerk accepting those documents, and they're going to bring those to me, and I'm going to look into that into more detail. It's important that the people of this county are aware that the office of the clerk is, is an, an office of integrity, that they don't have to worry about whether politicians are getting special favors. I'm going to make sure that all of this is aired in the full daylight so that everybody knows what's going on and that people can rest easy. Now, just so everyone knows, the clerk's been asked that question. And his response was, well, the Attorney General doesn't let me ask those, those questions. The Attorney General doesn't let me look into that transaction. So my response was, well, then why don't we get the legislature to pass a law that allows us to do this? And Mr. Fry's response was, well, I tried to pass a law once and couldn't get it passed. Well, I don't know if that's the case. I don't know the, law, the bill number. But it's interesting that as a Republican clerk in the largest jur jurisdiction of Virginia, Controlled he, by Republicans he couldn't get a bill General passed. Assembly. And let me tell you what I've done. I learned about his response. And 20 minutes after I had his response, Delegate Steve Shannon has agreed to sponsor a bill to allow the clerks all over the state to look into this. And I found two other delegates who are willing to sit down and talk about helping in this process. That took me 20 minutes. Our clerk's been there 16 years and can't get the job done. I think that's ironic. We're going to be taking a break. Uh, if John Fry's out there, you're welcome to call. I'm sure Dale will uh, take your question. Uh, Ken Cuccinelli, same thing. You want to call? Dale will take your question. So will I. You're watching Inside Scoop Virginia. My name is George Burke. Dale Evans is my guest. We'll be back in two minutes. Thank you. This is Mommy's bed. Me and Jenny were jumping on it. Mommy's gun fell on the floor. I was a cowboy. Bang, 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 bang. I said, Jenny, wake up, wake up. It's just pretend but she wouldn't wake up. If you give me a fish. If you give someone a fish. You feed them for a day. Teach someone to fish. You feed them for a lifetime. Give me a fish and you'll feed me for a day. Teach me to fish and you'll feed me for a lifetime. Through Volunteers of America, you can help change lives in your community. Oh, 
mister studied algebra in school and got a better job than I could. You take the last call. Oh, no, 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 mister stuck in an entry-level job because you only learn basic math. I don't have a boss riding my butt like you do, so you take it so you can get back to your desk. <laughs> you know, I probably should, but maybe Miss AP Calculus with the $200 haircut in the big office upstairs would like a cup. Oh, no, mister, what was your name again? Never mind, it doesn't matter. I'm too busy doing important things to care. I just came down for some sweet and stir. <laughs> You know, if my limited math abilities weren't keeping me from getting a better job, I'd quit this afternoon. I don't blame you. But thank goodness you're stuck here because we really need someone to make the coffee. <laughs> Welcome back to Inside Scoop, Virginia. My name is George Burke. Dale Evans, Democratic candidate for clerk of court is uh, in Fairfax County and Fairfax City, is my guest. Uh, and again, I will uh, issue an open invitation to uh, Clerk John Fry and uh, Senator Ken Cuccinelli. I guess he got beat up a little bit today uh, at a press conference out in Fairfax. Our number is 571-749-1166. Uh, Senator Cuccinelli was on this program oh, about two or three weeks ago in a debate with his opponent, Janet Olazek. I received word today he's excerpted little pieces of our debate and using them in a television ad. I guess that's sort of passe these days. It, it happens. Uh, let's talk, uh, you know, you, you focus on community service. We were talking about a little bit during the break. Let's expand upon that. You know, who uh, who is that community, and why? Who is going to be benefit from expanded hours and the other things you want to do relative to customer service? Well, the first answer would obviously be the taxpayers of this community and the residents of Fairfax County and Fairfax City. Um, they have to have access to this this system. Um, there's a variety of things I want to do from e-filings for lawyers. Uh, I want to keep the office open until 6 o'clock. Uh, Supervisor Kaufman, um, I want to contact him because he's talked in the past about having substations set up for the clerk's office. Uh, we have a, a South County administration building. You know, can we put a computer down there and a staff person down there to make it better so people don't have to drive all the way to Fairfax? You know, people don't want to get into this uh, traffic jams that we have in our highway, especially in light of our abuser fees that were passed by our legislature. Uh, they, we, you know, they don't want to get on that highway. Which you'll have to collect. Which I'd have to collect. Yeah. Yes, I would. So, I mean, I, what, I'm, what my goal is, is, and this has been my goal always in politics, the people have the answers. You know, I, I'm not a rocket scientist. I, I didn't wake up one day and just smarter than everybody else. What I have is the ability to go out and talk to the people. I've spent the last two months since I've been in the race, two plus months, talking to people. I'm, if, I make the joke that if two people get together for a barbecue, I'm standing there. And I'm almost serious about that. I mean, I will go anywhere people want to talk about this office. I'm not going to stop doing that when I'm elected. That's not when politicians should stop meeting with people. You know, I've, I've become uh, awed by people like Chap Peterson and Mark Sickles and Jeff McKay and, and uh, George Barker and Janet Howell and all the other people out there who hold office in Virginia who consistently reach out to the voters and meet with them on a consistent basis, talk to them about programs. I mean, that's what government's about. That's, how, that's what makes it work. It's, it doesn't work if you're elected to an eight-year term and you don't show up at the office or you don't go out and talk to the voters or you think that there's no reason that people have to know who the clerk is. That's not the way government works. So I want to institute those things. One of the things I want to do to continue this outreach is once elected, I'm going to establish a liaison to meet, to, to deal with uh, or to work with this, the Supreme Court of Virginia, the Sheriff's Office, the uh, Commonwealth Attorney's Office, the uh, Bar Association, the Chamber of Commerce. I'm going to have people who will work with those offices and meet with them on a regular basis so that we can get the input from the community because there are consumers. Lawyers who come to the courthouse, there are consumers. Abstractors, title companies, there are consumers. People who want marriage licenses, there are consumers. And instead of staying home or not being there to meet them, I'm going to be there. In fact, I, I think if you remember back to the first show that I did with you, uh, the example I used was when we impanel a jury, the clerk should be there to thank those people for their civic uh -huh. duty, for uh -huh. performing their civic duty. He should be there to let them know that 
He's the only elected official in this process that's there for them to talk to. He's sort of the ombudsman for the court system. He has to make himself available to the public so that if they have an issue, they can meet with him. He has a great staff. The people in the clerk's office that I've talked to, and trust me, quite a few of his employees have called me, quite a few of his past employees have called me. The people I've talked to are exceptional individuals, and I'm going to enjoy working with them and making the clerk's office hum like a well-oiled machine. But having said that, they need direction. They need management. They need someone who's there every day running the ship, just as a, a captain does on an ocean liner. You know, we touched upon politics for a minute. I always like to address the whole issue of politics. Let's talk about your campaign. How's it going? I mean, do you, you feel comfortable where you're at? We're about two weeks out. Um, I know you've been working very hard. You've been all over the place. And I, I can attest that, in fact, you have shown up at places. If there's two people gathering, you show up. I've, we, our paths have crossed many times uh, during the campaign. And I applaud you for that. Uh, How's it going? I mean, what kind of feedback are you getting from some of the other candidates and some of the other electeds? Uh, and uh, where's your focus between now and Election Day? Well, it's going very well. I, and I, I would be lying if I said that I was perfectly happy and there was nothing else I had to do between now and Election Day. I wish I could say that, but obviously I can't. Uh, we have to continue to get our message out. We need to let people know that not only do I have innovative and creative ideas about what to do with this office and how I can make it more customer service and customer friendly, the other thing that I am is I'm a Democrat, and we need to let people know that. I'm res Democrats care about people. I want to respond to the needs of the people. I want to help, work, help them work through the clerk's office because it's, it's, it's a maze sometimes of what they have to do, and I want to help people get through that process and make it as easy as possible. So the campaign's going well. I'm everywhere. Um, it's interesting that um, I virtually broke onto this scene in August, um, right when I was on your show. Mm -hmm. I'd been asked to run by some individuals. I, I, went to the Democratic Party, I sought out support. They said they would support me. I got into this race since August 28th when I've been nominated for this office, right up to this moment. Every endorsement that's come down from every endorsing group has endorsed me. The people who deal with the clerk's office on a regular basis, the Commonwealth Attorney, the Sheriff, the Sheriff's deputies, the police, the firefighters, the statewide police uh, association, mm -hmm. everybody's endorsed me. La the Labor Council. I mean, I'm happy to say that all these people have endorsed me. When you look at my opponent, my Republican opponent's website, what it says there is that the Broward County clerk has supported him. Well, aren't they the ones that did the chads? I think they did, yes. <laughs> and the, and the, yes. And the and 2000 race with Gore and Bush. And it's wonderful that they, that they endorse him, that the clerk there endorses him, but you know what? I'm more concerned about the people of Fairfax County. And maybe if we were focused more on Fairfax, and maybe if this clerk was focus, focused more on Fairfax County instead of Broward County, Florida, maybe things would be working better. And uh, you've, uh, you had mentioned you have met with a lot of the local clerks and some of the other jurisdictions here in the I lake have. as well. I, I've met with David Bell in Arlington, and in fact, Paul Ferguson is supporting me, his uh, successor. Uh, I've talked to Bill Ryland over in Prince William County, who previously was the clerk and hopefully will uh -huh. be the clerk again, a fine young man. Um, and uh, so I am reaching out to all these individuals, trying to learn from them and make them part of the process, because I don't have all the answers. Well, obviously, you know, coming in at this point, you, it certainly, you had an uphill battle to get running and rolling. Uh, but I think that everyone will agree Fairfax has turned much bluer in certainly in, in recent years. And we have a strong ticket this year from top to bottom. And you'll be on the first page of the voting screens we, when will. it comes up. Yeah. Uh, you and the state senate race in that district, I believe, are the first ones that will pop up before people's eyes. So remember that name, Dale Evans. Dale, we come to a time in the show where I try to give a candidate who's my guest, an opportunity to talk directly to the voters. And uh, I'll give you a couple of minutes. Just, you know, tell them, don't forget to tell them to vote for you. That's the old Tip O'Neill adage, excuse me. Uh, but uh, the podium is yours. Well, thank you. Uh, and again, thank you for having me here. I really appreciate it. As I said earlier in the show, this is the most important office you've never heard of. And when I got into this office, I started looking, or this race, I started looking at what I needed. And I, really, I realized that I wanted to bring my ethic of hard work and integrity to the clerk's office to solve many of the problems that exist, and there are many problems that exist. I was stunned when I looked around and I found out that our clerk was selling our personal information, 
that he was uh, failing audits by the uh, auditor of the Virginia Commonwealth, as well as the Supreme Court reports. Um, I was stunned to find out that he had installed a computer system at the cost of five million dollars to the taxpayers and was now going to go back out and replace it with another computer for another five million dollars. It's a ten million dollar fiasco and it doesn't have to happen like that. With cooperation and outreach, we can make this clerk's office work and we can work with the state Supreme Court, we can work with the Bar Association of Virginia, we can work with the Bar Association of Fairfax, the Chamber of Commerce, the Sheriff's Department, and we can create a better clerk's office that gives customer service to every individual that comes in front of the clerk's office. So I think I can do this better than the incumbent. I urge people to come out November 6th and vote for me. If you're not voting for me, you can come out November 10th. I'm just kidding. But it's, it's, it's an exciting time, and I just want to thank all those people that I've met all over uh, Fairfax County and Fairfax City. They have been great. Uh, I've loved the jokes about my name. I've loved the jokes about the cowboy boot on my sign, and uh, I'd just like to thank all of you. Well, people, the, the two signs I think that have drawn the most comments during this election period are yours with the boot and <laughs> Tina Hone, who's running as a Democrat for at-large school board, has a hand on hers. Exactly. And uh, those are the signs that people notice. They're different. They've got a, a, just a little trick. People make fun of them. They make jokes of them, et cetera, but they notice them and uh, talk about them. Uh, you know, I personally am looking forward to a strong... Uh, Democratic ticket uh, this uh, November 6th. I urge everybody to vote. Uh, from Jerry, Con uh, Jerry Connolly right on down the ticket, we have good candidates. Uh, I think they're talking sense, they're talking responsibility, uh, fiscally and just common sense, uh, which we haven't seen for a while coming out of the General Assembly and quite frankly coming out of some of these uh, county leaders like Corey Stewart and Prince William, who's just created a firestorm of divisiveness down there. Uh, I hope that uh, the voters take that into account on Election Day. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you. Thank you. Uh, I wish you the best of luck on November 6th. Uh, you'll certainly have my vote and my family's votes. Uh, it's time for a change in that office. Uh, I'd like to, to be able to remember the name of the person who does serve as our clerk of court, <laughs> and I think that'll be easy. I thank the view viewers uh, for watching tonight. Uh, you've been watching Inside Scoop Virginia. My name is George Burke. Again, our guest was Fairfax County Clerk of Court candidate Dale Evans. Uh, we'll see you next week, and thanks for watching.